let's take a step back and look at the general architecture of the information system we developed so far. In the previous videos, we created the core information system with a graphical interface for managing patient and practitioner information. We later added DICOM functionalities, both with a DICOM server which was linked to the central database and a DICOM client providing a simple graphical interface to perform C-Find and C-Move operations. Now, we want to add HL7 capabilities to our system. First, we will focus on the HL7 client. We want this client to have an interface for filling in patient information and to be able to send this information to a server using an ADT A01 admission message. In the next video, we will look at the server side of the application and create an application which will be able to listen for incoming HL7 messages and add the patient information to the database when it receives it. Let's now see how to implement the client side. We will use the happy test panel as a test server so that we can check that the message is correctly sent. We put different elements in the interface. The first part is a patient form. We already created a form for adding a person or a patient in the core project. It's always good to reuse things that already work. The create person form class is a GPN object, which can be directly inserted into our interface. With the NetBeans design tool, this can be done by a simple drag and drop of the class. In addition to the patient form, we need to be able to trigger an event to send the ADT message. To do that, we created a send ADT button, as well as two additional fields where we can fill in the destination host and port. We also added an empty glabel element so that we can give some feedback to the user. When the user clicks on the send ADT message, we first need to retrieve the person information. As we have used the create person form that we created in the core HIS, we can use the existing get person method. As we can see, this method simply reads all the field of the form and puts the results in a person object. Once we have the person, we can create a patient object and set the person of this patient to the information contained in the form. We then retrieve the host and port information. As we are here in the view part of the application, we shouldn't do anything else with the data. Any further operation needs to take place in a controller. In this case, we have the client package where we created an HL7 client class with a static send ADT A01 method. Using a static method allows us not to have to create an instance of the class every time we need to use it. Let's take a look at the HL7 client. Here we can see the send ADT A01 static method as well as the static attribute. Static attribute is the last sequence number, which will be a counter, which will be incremented every time we send a message so that you don't send two messages with the same ID to the server. To generate and send the ADT message, we will use the happy library. In the dependencies of our projects, we added, in addition to the core his projects, the the happy base and happy structures for HL7 version 2.3. The rest of the code is mostly taken from the examples provided on the website of the happy library. The send ADT method is a two steps process. First, we have to create the message, then, we have to send it to the server. The message is created using the ADT A01 class from HAPPY. The ADT A01 class allows us to quickly generate the basic structure of the message and to access all the different segments. The 
init quick start method will pre-fill the MSH segment. We can then retrieve that segment and fill it if and fill in any additional information we want. In this case, we add a sending application and a sequence number with our counter. The core of the ADT message will be the patient information segment. This is where we need to put all the information we received from the form. This is for information is, is passed to the send ADT method as a patient object. Here, we fill in the patient name field with the family and given name, and the patient ID with the national number. We will use the national number as a unique identifier for our patients. It's not very easy to see how to insert information into the segments. Let's have a quick look at the HAPPY version 2.3 documentation. We see that the ADT A01 class represents the message structure. For every segment of the message, we have a method to get the segment which will create it if it doesn't exist yet. So when we call the getPID method, we both create and retrieve the PID object. The same thing happens with the PID object, which represents the HL7 PID segment. We have a list of all the fields which we can create and access at the same time with the getter. Each of those fields return an object representing one of HL7's data types. Some of the fields, like the patient name, are repeating, meaning that, that there can be more than one instance of this field. In this case, the getter can either return an array or a specific repetition. In the code, we see here that we get the first repetition of the patient name. In our case, we will only need one. We similarly put the date of birth and sex of the person. Once we have created the message, we can send it to the server. First, we have to create a context. The context is an object that will manage the configuration of the HL7 operations. From the context objects, we can retrieve a parser, which will allow us to translate the messages between Java objects and HL7 strings. For debugging purposes, we print the encoded message into the terminal. We then have to open a connection to the server. We have to provide the host and port, as, as usual, and we also have a parameter determining if you want to use a secured SSL connection. Configuring SSL communication is hard, so we'll ignore that for the moment. The initiator class is then used to send the HL7 message and receive the response. We print the response to the terminal and we check if the response is an ACK message. If that's the case, we, re we will return true, meaning that everything went well. If the response is not an ACK message, or an exception occurred, we will return false. Back in the view, we check this boolean. If everything went well, we notify the user that we received the ACK message. Else, we warn the user that there was an error. Let's see this code in action. In the test panel, we'll start a receiving connection on port 52931. In our client, we fill in some patient information. When we click on the send ADT button, we can see the message exchange appear in the terminal. Similarly, we can check from the server side that we correctly received the message. At this point, the server does nothing, as we just used the happy test panel. The next video will look at the server side of the operation.